So round two at Donington Park for the Millie Challenge Series 2018 Cooper S Class. I find myself P6 on the grid after pulling the P6 card. So it's a reverse grid. We get a choice of uh, three cards with three different starting positions for the reverse grid. P6 being the worst. Uh, or, yes, I think it is P6 being the worst. Uh, so I'm sat behind Stu to my right in P5 and dead ahead Rob Austin in P4. My thoughts are I've got a lot of confidence from the first race that I won uh, rather fortuitously, but for the most part, I set some really good lap times and did some very good overtaking. So I, I, I wanted to take that into this race. Uh, so my game plan really was to stick with Rob at the start. He often get well, he, he made an amazing start for the race one. So if I can stick with Rob, get to the front and just battle it out, that, that's kind of where I thought I might be able to play this one. Unfortunately, I fluffed my start and I dropped straight back. So uh, let's get let's get into it. The start was really quick, actually. I think it caught me off guard a little bit. Uh, I didn't master the handbrake. I got wheel spin and very low rev, so I've just got to work at that at Snetterton. Maybe do some practicing uh, before the race. So Sammy comes up on the inside, takes my position. I'm very tentative around the outside of Redgate, very slow. And you can see in the rear view there that Tim Bill gets a march on me as well and he's right on me. Uh, Tim has a great race actually. His R53 was handling really, really well. But that's later on in the race. So this is something, you know, I'm a little, a little bit slow out of the blocks really. Uh, it takes me a few 30 seconds or so just to get my confidence up. This is all very new to me. Um, so I've got to stick with stick with Sammy in front of me. Uh, I think Sammy takes McLean's a little bit slow there, which backs me into Tim, which allows Tim to slingshot down into coppice. Uh, I see him quite late, but I see him and let him through. And P8. I'm kind of thinking a similar kind of thing, because I was P7 in, the, in race one at this very stage. And I'm thinking now that I don't want, I'm, I, I need to get on with it. I need to start overtaking people because otherwise whoever's at the front, if they're getting some good lap times in, then they'll be away. So I get a good slingshot out of the S's onto the home straight. And I think I'm going to pass Sammy, but actually I don't, which does surprise me. The car just didn't have the legs to get past Sammy. Um, I tried the undercut but Sammy held the position well. Tim positions his car in front of Sammy. And again, we're just a, a train of cars at the moment. But one thing, I am looking ahead at trying, yeah, uh, one, two, three, four, five cars, that, I, that that could get me into third position. That's that's all I'm thinking at the moment. Uh, tried to move there at the old hairpin on Sammy, but uh, didn't get the traction, left Sammy enough room to, to pull out and we are still racing. So I mentioned at the start there were two, two main issues with this race for me. My start and then um, I fluffed my gears um, in, in, on one of the laps, lap three, lap four in an overtaking manoeuvre, which I'll show you shortly. So congestion here in the S's, take full advantage, go around the outside, get some great traction. So I've overtaken Sammy back into P7 and now I want to follow Stu past Tim, but Tim gets good traction. Nowhere for me to go. I back off, I'm just concentrating on going into red great, getting a good exit. I do. Stu goes wide and I'm able to get past. Tim positions his car so I can't get past him. But I'm going to make a move now. Around the outside, flat out, hard on the brakes. Tim gives me the room and I go around, but I select sixth gear. 
I get absolutely no drive coming out of the old hairpin. After short shift, uh, quick shift into fourth, then into third, just to get anywhere. But at this time, the damage is done, and I lose both positions. Now that is mistake number two for this race, and it cost me dearly. I'm now battling to get back into P5 for the next couple of laps. I'm still enjoying it, it's fantastic, it's a great learning curve, but I was kicking myself. It was just such a silly mistake to make. I wanted to be hunting down P4 and P3 and challenging for uh, the podium. And these guys get take the S's really well, I make up no ground there. Usually that's that's a, a good hunting ground for me. I'll just fluff my gears. So try to get fourth and I screwed it up. And that's why Sammy's coming right up. I see her quite late, but I give her a little bit of room. I go wide here, but I get the better traction and I manage to keep Sammy behind me. So I need to compose myself. That was that was better. Only old hairpin. Good swatch curves here. I think I'm shifting into fifth a little bit early. Maybe not getting the revs up. McLean's is always a funny corner for me. It was the first corner I went off on in race one. So I'm always a little bit tentative around there. But again, I'm not really catching Stu or Tim. And considering they're battling with each other, normally that that is an opportunity for the car behind or the car in front to pull away or the car behind to sort of gain time on them. But I'm not really gaining any time at all at the moment. And at, if anything, they've pulled away from me. Was a, that was a better lap time. So we are getting quicker. Confidence is coming back to me. I'm going to go flat out. Again round Craners. Late on the braking. Just a dab. Get good speed around the old hairpin. And I can start to see that I am closing. ever so slightly. So I just focus on getting around McLean, it's nice and clean. Hit the, hit the late apex. It looks like as well, ahead of Tim, that we're catching three and four. going to make a move, Stu's making a move on Tim, this is my opportunity, Tim might go late, he has to go round, it's a really tight angle for Stu, he gets a really, he gets a poor exit as he bounces off that kerb and gives me the opportunity to get past him, but again, a little bit like Sammy, I, the, the car just doesn't seem to be getting past on that straight, so I have to go wide, but I make it stick. Get better better traction out of Redgate than Stu. So P6 again. Tim had a terrible race one. I think he had to retire. So he, in theory, has got fresher tyres. Um, that's not an excuse. He's driving really well, but looking at the footage back, you can see where Tim's getting the grip, and that car is just pulling away and getting really good traction out of these corners. Tim's driving really well and getting the most out of that car. I mean, my tyres aren't that bad, but I, I did feel that I did, you know, having no experience here. It did. I'm gaining little bits of knowledge on how the car feels, tyre management, 
Um, that was a quick lap. 121, anything 121 in the second lap. We were all a, a second off the pace from the first race. I don't know what that is. It, it's, uh, this was half five, six o'clock in the evening, so the track is going to be cooler. Um, everybody's tyres are going to be one race down. I have a look here. I decided better off it and stay behind Tim. I could see that there was a slower car. I didn't want to get in the way of that or that to cause a problem when we're coming out of the old hairpin. I've still got Stu behind me. So I've got to be super sharp on these corners, not make a mistake and not fluff my gears. I know I'm still P6 and in, my back, in the back of my mind I know it's eight, nine, ten minutes into the race and my hopes of being on the podium have kind of finished really. So I just want to have a good old tussle with Tim um, and see if I can see if I can overtake him. Got good exit there. Well, in the back, in the in, in the mirrors, I can see Stu's just retired. Um, I, I don't know what the problem was there, but uh, sigh of relief because he was all over me. It was probably only a matter of time before he, he, he took the position back. Now, I get great traction. Tim comes tight. I have two wheels on the grass, but he, he sees me and moves. You can see I'm nudging ahead and lets me go into Craner's P5. That was really squeaky bum moment. <laughs> I think it was uh, 85 miles an hour, two wheels on the grass, yep, but uh, it was an aggressive move, but I planted it, committed to it, Tim saw me, gave me the room, and P5, so I'm delighted, because Tim was driving really well, he is driving really, really well. And his car just seems really fast. I've got to try and keep him behind there. So he's getting look, he's getting really good traction. He's right up beside me. I break quite late here. Uh, and then Chloe and is it Montgomery, Andy? Um, make contact, take each other out on the S's, and I go straight through and I'm in P3. So I can't really believe my luck. I know there should be a couple of laps left. I try and look down the track to see where the leaders are, but I can't see them. I mean, they're miles away. Keith, I mean, is in second, Rob's in first. Keith actually gets the fastest lap and gets his uh, first podium of the season, P2. And Rob takes his, his first win. So really for me, it's just keep it tight, keep it neat, and take the car home, bring it home, over the line, and keep Tim behind me, don't make any mistakes, don't need to drive too hard. There's not much going on now, guys, you might as well forward this to the end, <laughs> if you want, or if you're watching this to uh, just find out what it's like to drive around Donington, keep watching, this is how you do it. It is a fantastic circuit. Very quick circuit. I'm looking forward to Snetterton now. It's in two weeks. There's a mini festival on as well, so it's going to be a great atmosphere. Uh, there's three races on at Snetterton. So that'll be interesting how we, how we manage the tyres. And uh, having two days of racing. But P3, I'm just over the moon. I didn't know that, at this point, I didn't know that you take your best result into the championship. So what that means is uh, my win counts as my points in the first race, uh, but I also get points for the 
the fastest lap as well. So this P3, because it doesn't better my, my first result, is discounted, which is fine, but I still get a trophy, I still get on the podium with the champagne, uh, the TV interview, <laughs> it's all a bit glamorous and, uh, and great fun. Get to spray the champagne, collecting my caps now I've got, I've got a I've got a mission I've got a taste for the podium but realistically it'd be interesting to know what my pace is going to be like at Snetterton and what everybody else's pace is going to be like at Snetterton this is the first race everyone's just finding their feet getting into it everyone's going to be going into Snetterton with a lot more confidence so it's all, it, it was tough this weekend, of course it was, but it, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be equally tough at Snetterton as well. I look forward to doing some commentary at Snetterton. But anyway, back to Donington, so out of McLean's, in fourth, brake, third, find the apex and coppice, hard on the accelerator, eased the steering, open it all up down the back straight, look in my mirror, Tim's eased off, oh, ah, there you go, I missed the apex by some margin, that actually cost me a second, which is interesting, watching all these films back and looking at the lap times, I can see where I'm quick and where I'm not in real time and that is really useful to understand if you take, if you miss an apex, or uh, if you wheel spin, or if you if you lock up, you know, what sort of time that's going to cost you? Anyway, there you go. P3 on the podium again, and going into Snetterton uh, Championship with the championship lead. See you next time, guys.